Good afternoon, everyone. We are live from the Group M rooftop today, joined by Critio. So super, super lucky to have Mike here with us today. So Mike, why don't we kick off just by telling us who you are and what you do. Thanks, Sam. So I'm Mike Balabanov. I'm the VP of Agency here at Critio, oversee our agency strategy, as well, especially as it comes to commerce. Amazing. I mean, we're old pals. I feel like we do this all the time at this point, so it's good to see you again. Um, it is your third year at CAN with Critio. Is that correct? That is very correct, yeah. And I feel like so much has changed just in those three years. I mean, it's you guys as a company have changed. I think the platform has evolved quite a bit. I walked past your, your installations recently and I saw the big Commerce Topia branding. So why don't we start by telling us a little bit about what Commerce Topia is? Absolutely. And I think the other thing, third year with Critio can, but where Commerce sits at can is I think is an interesting place. Yeah. Uh, I heard this on a panel this week around the fact that Commerce is kind of in a back alley three years ago, maybe you know. Yeah. Uh, and now it's really center stage. Yeah. Uh, and I think it's it's an exciting part. Yeah. And Commerce Topia is really Imagining a world where we're past third-party cookie deprecation, mm. where we live in a world of less fragmentation as it comes to commerce, where there's a seamless connection between brand spend, transactions, and we mm. are in this beautiful world that I think we all want to live in. Yeah. So um, it's, it's our message and our theme and kind of our wish as we evolve and continue to grow this industry that's rapidly evolving mm. uh, to drive. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think we're quite at Commerce Tobia yet, but I do think it's a vision. Was that my panel that you're stealing the, that talk Possib tech from? Possibly. Yeah, hopefully more people than me are just saying <laughs> that. But I do think there was a big shift between where Commerce sat, even last year, right? It was more of like a specialist conversation and like the Commerce leaders were having Commerce discussions, but it hadn't quite like permeated the full, you know, grandiosity of CAN. And I think this year what we've seen is a big step up in the way it is centered in the conversations. The other thing too is, it's can. It's about creativity. And so I'm really thrilled to see the creative element coming together with the commerce elements because I think there was this fallacy that we're only ever talking about things. We are going to talk about things that are transactional, right? But that we were kind of um, narrowed to a certain part of the funnel or a certain part of the industry. So it's nice to see creativity and commerce kind of colliding on the world's largest stage for creativity. So I think, I think it's amazing. And I think creativity is such an important part <clears throat> At the end of the day, advertising is yeah. about that emotional connection yeah. and uh, creating those experiences. Yeah. And I think that commerce just superpowers that and brings that transactional exactly. element and transactional aspect to it, exactly. which I think is amazing. And I think we're going to continue to see what we're excited about. How do you really continue to bring the aspect of creativity inside everything yeah. we do in commerce, even if it is more lower funnel driven? Yeah, I think sometimes what is unappreciated is in order for that creativity to really reach people, uh, I would love for it to be magic, I'm sure as well as you would, right? And Or like just put AI to work and we snap our fingers and out it goes. But I think there's still a tremendous amount of rigor that goes into making sure that creativity reaches the right people, making sure advertising reaches the right people in general. And I think in the space that we're operating in, in commerce, that's really, really challenging still. I know there's a lot of um, headwinds that we're still up against with all of the growth in commerce and retail media networks continuing to grow mm -hmm. and the kind of like market nuance that we see in this space. Um, it's, it's tough still. Uh, it's a very fragmented uh, market and I think that's one of the big themes that you and I discuss frequently is that fragmentation especially in places like I think Europe right more nascent capabilities um, but even in the U.S. we have advertisers that we work with in Group M that in a single market are operating with 40 plus retail media networks and despite wanting to take that kind of fewer, bigger, better approach, do you still have that obligation to, you know, be investing with the retailers which you sell products in at least for the endemic. So talk to me a little bit about how you're seeing the fragmentation, what that means yeah. to you guys at Critio. Well, again, if you think about the world of Commerce Topia, we solve fragmentation, so we're there already. So. Um, oh, good to know. All right, great. <laughs> Uh, no, I think fragmentation is a massive uh, challenge uh, for the growth of the industry, right? I think for us, one of the studies we did last year was fragmentation could cost the industry 20% of the projected growth rate, right? So wow. that's a big percentage. Uh, and I think we're all here trying to figure it out because it is probably on your world, it's probably untenable to work with 40 retail media networks for a long time. Yeah. Uh, it takes a lot of manpower, a lot of people, a lot of different conversations. Uh, we're really thinking about it. We power over 225 uh, retail media networks globally. Um, so we work with a lot of retailers and we really are trying to solve the issue of how do you really think about planning mm. in a more product first approach. Yeah. So we call it skunification. 
You can put SKU and you puns anywhere. Word, word for everything. Do you want to go to SKU University? Oh, no, I'm not <laughs> sure I do. <laughs> Maybe. We'll see. Um, but it's really taken this approach of saying, what are we trying to do? We're trying to sell products. A brand might have 10 products they want to support. How do you solve three challenges? First challenge is, where are those products even sold today across all these retail media networks? Right. Right? You can't expect a media planner or just even a brand manager to know that the product is on all these grocery shelves and also on all these new delivery platforms such as Uber right. or Shipt or any of the other platforms that we work with. Yep. So I think the challenge is starting to think from a product first approach, where are my products sold and then how easy it is to execute. Right? Right. I think the challenge has been and we really saw the shift happening about two years ago in our world is having the transparency that wasn't there before in terms of a retailer specific execution, still having that but at the same time bringing the efficiencies of if you want to run across 40 networks, mm. pressing a button and being able to create those line items and being able to run across 40 networks in a very yeah. seamless fashion. And I think what we're also trying to solve for is the question I think we get a lot when we talk is, well, okay, I know I need to be on this retailer, but how much should I spend? Absolutely. Uh, and that's a challenge that we're solving due to just, again, having such a breadth of retail and such a breadth of data to understand if I spend X amount of dollars, you can expect to have this many sales or this row as. Yeah. So it, it's something that we've been really working towards this year and really having that balance of product first thinking, but still having the transparency of the retail first approach. Yeah, there's, there's so much to talk about there. I mean, you start out by saying that for us, it must feel untenable to manage that kind of scale. And in a lot of ways it is, I think, Part of our responsibility as an agency is to help bring some of that kind of rigor and intentionality to this space. The time during COVID, right, where everyone was moving online and it was the birth of all these retail media networks. It was very exciting. We were testing. We were learning. There was a little bit of money everywhere. And then I think we went through a period of, of kind of pausing and saying, okay, now we have to think about what's really scalable, Right? What is the point of diminishing returns? How do we take care of these retail relationships and still foster good relationships with the, the buyers and the sales teams and the trade side of the business? How does trade work with the media side of the business? Like That's not lost on us by any means, but we do have to get really, really intentional about every single dollar spent, right? Considering the macroeconomic kind of pressures as well, we know we have to stretch every single penny, and I think part of that comes down to a culture and people and process. And then part of that, of course, comes down to technology, right? Like we have to put technology to use for us, whether that's in intelligent planning systems, intelligent in-flight optimization, um, great measurement frameworks up front. What are we measuring towards, right? A lot of the discussions I think we've heard this week are about kind of moving away just from base return on ad spend. Um, talk about another place of like fragmentation and unstandardized metrics, it's really challenging, I think, to compare across retail media networks when attribution methodologies are wildly different. So we're moving to a place of incrementality. And so there's all these things that I think are a really positive shift to get us there, but it takes time. On the technology front, I think what you guys are doing is really interesting with SKU-based planning because you know, you might assume that someone working at a brand, like being a brand manager, you would have that really clear understanding of where a single product is sold. But the reality for a lot of these large CPGs and FMCGs is that the distribution is just so vast and so much is changing and so much of retail is hyper local. It's actually not that easy to keep track of that, right? And a lot of like legacy systems on the CPG side aren't great at that either. And so I think what you're doing take something that's just like a thorn in a lot of marketers and salespeople's side and just says, let's remove that piece of complexity for you and make it a little bit easier to activate across this network. And I think for the people who knew Critio even just a couple of years ago, right, back when it was more about those network yep. buys, being able to advertise across multiple retailers at once, and then it was more of a focus on, on private marketplace and specific retailers, and now it's almost like, it feels like, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but we're almost like settling back in like the hyper-sophisticated version of the happy medium, which is how do we manage the mid-tail and the long-tail along with those like core head retailers. So, I mean, you tell me, does that sound right? Or? That sounds actually exactly right. I think that there is, it's having the flexibility and I think the automation that we need yeah. there with still the transparency that is key. Yeah. Because I think you, may, you hit on a couple of points that are really clear. The relationship with the brand and the retailer 
is going to be always important. There's there is more than media. I think there's, there's it is 100%. it is a business relationship, right? Yes. That, that goes way beyond what we talk about in retail media. And sure. I think it's a really important part that's never going to go anywhere. Yes. Yeah. But I think as we see more dollars flowing into the space, especially as you know more with cookie deprecation, yeah. the on-site retail media environment becomes a lot more important yeah. because you have a first party environment with closed loop measurement. But for us, the way we see it, in order to see that growth that we expect, you know, it's so, many, so funny, everyone throws these different numbers around. I know that um, you guys just Only released Only ours it. are right, so. Oh, I got it. This, the, <laughs> a great report, by the way, that really was released this Thanks. year Credit next year. Uh, but I think when you look at it, if we really want to get to that point, we have to be able to scale Right. And, but we're doing it in the same time of keeping those relationships really important between the brand yeah. and the retailer. Yeah. And I think media is just, again, just a component of that part. Yeah, um, no, you're, you're absolutely right. Um, I think that scalability is such an important word, right? And any new capability, yeah. and we've, we've looked at retail media and tried to find like those similarities between as digital was growing up or as mobile was growing up, as social was growing up. And there's a lot of this playbook I think that we've seen before, right? Especially for folks yeah. that have been around the industry a long time. It's like we've seen this movie before. So let's take the learnings from how things scale and take that forward. But the important difference that we're kind of hitting on here is typically as things mature, you can say, all right, the, the less premium or the less valuable inventory, whatever that may be, Let's focus less on that and just focus on, and here it's like every single retail relationship is important, right? There's yep. no saying, we're actually not going to take care of those anymore, right? And for the endemic retailers at least, and so we have to find smart ways to be able to, you know, invest in properly to the point, the appropriate amount of investment based on the size of the business and the maturity of the capabilities, obviously. Um, and I think that, that technologies like yours are really the way that we're going to answer that. So um, I guess I will start to wrap up our conversation just by asking for some of your personal maybe thoughts about when we're sitting down at Can next year. Yeah. This is one of my favorite questions. And I was looking back at some of the answers from last year. I was like, we got some of it right. Um, but when we're sitting here a year from now, what do you hope to be the biggest shift that we see in this space? What do you want the conversation to be centered on next year? Yeah, I, I think obviously there's a lot of conversation about AI today, right? And I think like it, it's a yeah. core... <laughs> It's an, it's an overused word, I think, right? Because oh, AI, no, <laughs> AI can mean so many different things. I think at Critio, we've been kind of focused on AI for a very long time due to kind of the way our business has grown up over the past yeah. years. Um, I think so. How do we really leverage tools to do things that are going to make it easier for st strategists and planners to actually strategize and plan? Yeah. I think so much time currently on both sides is being spent on hands-on keyboard work and just kind of building things. I think we always want to get to this level of utilizing technology to really drive better strategic thought. And right. my whole thought is that this product first approach, I think at the end of the day, I, you brought up a point earlier around like, again, people and uh, large CPGs. We forget retail media has grown so fast, right? right. Since, since the pandemic. We're talking about large, massive organizations that are also trying to shift. Right. Oh, that could be and a whole separate conversation. Yes. Because everybody, everybody at a, so there's somebody at the CPGs or the F FMCG that cares about every retailer. There's one person that cares about this specific retailer, this right. specific metric. And I think the more we think about from a marketing lens to say, I care about selling this product, mm. here's all the opportunities for you to sell this product, and the more performance yeah. marketing lens. Yeah. Um, I hope we have the conversation of how performance marketing, brand marketing, and retail come together. And it's not just a lower funnel conversation. Mm -hmm. It is a more holistic conversation. Sure. Because the whole value of commerce media is how do you bake transaction signals and bake that transaction logic into anything you do and become smarter. And yes. yeah, so I would say that my, my hope is that we start talking about retail is not just lower funnel, but the holistic omni-channel presence. Yeah. Um, and how we do that in a very scalable way, because today it's so disparate and we can yeah. talk about in-store and all those other areas that are even yeah, more disparate, even right? In -store, yeah. So, uh, and, and my hope is that we get to this world where we live in commerce topia, where things are less fragmented. I can't wait to live there. <laughs> <laughs> we have a really nice apartment, so there's a penthouse yeah. available there. Right. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> uh, no, but seriously, I, I do think that uh, I really hope that we talk about how retail can help that aspect. And going back to where we started, the creativity part. Creativity yeah. is so important. How do you make sure that you're testing the right creative to drive the right outcomes? 
whether that's on video, whether that's uh, high impact media, whether that's dynamic creative optimization. I think at the end of the day, we want to bring consumers the right experience to be able to then drive the right actions yeah. and also measure them. And yeah. I think that that's, that's where that's, that's, I hope we talk about the full funnel next yeah. year more. I mean, we have a lot of the same hopes and dreams. I think this can in particular has been so valuable. I found that like when I'm talking to the leaders in the space of commerce or even outside of commerce, the conversations have gotten really honest and like really brave, I think, um, at the risk of sounding like overly philosophical on a Thursday afternoon after a very long week. But I think that I do think the conversations moved away a fair amount from like just lower funnel, which is good. I think we've kind of like broken out of that yep. box. But your point of it, you talk to these leaders at CPGs and FMCGs and you know, many of them are talking about how they're clinging to, to institutions that served them you know, one way really well for a long time. And how do you dismantle things that are so ingrained in your DNA in service of more innovation and a more you know, modern take in serving the modern consumer experience? And it's really, really hard. Right, like it can't be understated how challenging that is, and commerce sits in the center of all of that. Right, it's shopper teams and trade teams and sales teams and marketing teams and the convergence of digital and retail and like every single system that we're all really happy with for a long time. The funnel, right, linear concepts, like they're all kind of going by the wayside um, as we move into this kind of new era, frankly, of marketing overall. And commerce has kind of been the catalyst for a lot of that. And so I really hope that next year as we're sitting here, we're hearing some stories, and again, it's gonna sound a little like corny, but like some bravery from these brands, right? Like getting uncomfortable and breaking down those silos and thinking about bringing big creative yeah. ideas to the forefront of commerce media as well and building brands and building cultural relevance. Um, and I think that'll be really exciting. And of course, underpinning all of that has to has to be just excellent technology, right? 100%. And so I think that's what. Hopefully, together we'll just check all of those boxes and we'll uh, get it all solved. And yeah. Commerce it is. We will have a big Commerce Topia logo here next yeah, year. Is, <laughs> perfect. <laughs> Looking forward to it. Well, thank awesome. you so much, Mike. It was great to chat as always. And I guess we'll see if we're right Absolutely. next year. We will. We will replay this back. And thank you so much for having all us. Right. Of course.